Well, I think our offense in the second half was much, much better. Um, I thought we got out in transition more. I thought we cut harder. I thought our passing was better. And most significantly, we made some shots. Obviously, struggling in the first half with 6 to 30 from the field. On those six baskets, only one was on an assist. You, know, you don't even have to practice an offense to present those kind of numbers. But to our men's credit, they really regrouped. And they came out fighting. And offensively, really did a good job executing in the second half. I thought Trent was terrific all night. And then I thought Jamel gave us a much needed lift and you know, played like he's capable of playing. And you know, just having that third guy, you know, so to speak, you know, get in the scoring call, and it seems like um, you know, we've been struggling to have that happen. Obviously, the fourth guy. Um, so I, you know, I just think we were a lot better on offense. The first half, you know, we were we were very uh, sluggish offensively. We got rebounded in the second half and got a lot of second chance points. What what changed there? Um, we went after the ball better. Trent, once again, I thought was really good in that area. He came down with seven offensive, six, six offensive, seven total rebounds. And uh, we, you know, after having probably a, a pretty sizable deficit in the first half, I don't recall the exact numbers, um, you know, found a way to compete more favorably <coughs> on the backboard. How much did Ty's foul trouble contribute to the first half problem? Well, obviously, it, it, it really hamstrings us when, when he has that kind of immediate and then uh, continued foul trouble. I don't know that he ever really got into the flow of the game. Um, you know, he picked up two quick ones. I wasn't going to just sit him the whole game, especially as we had double-digit deficit in the first half. So I rolled the dice. You know, he's a senior. I hope he could play without picking up his third in the first half. Uh, sure enough, he picked up his third. And then it seemed like it wasn't too far into the second half. He picked up his fourth. Once again, he's so important to us, we roll the dice and we play him with four. And just as this, almost as significantly, you know, not trying to compare, you know, Jamel fouling out and not being able to finish the game as it goes down the stretch and into overtime was another obstacle that we had to overcome. You know, having said that, we gave up four threes, of which they made three of them to start the second half, where we just had defensive breakdown. We didn't close out with a high hand. We didn't guard their stack play correctly twice on ball screen actions, we didn't have the right rotation. And so um, that really put us in a hole. And then from there, once again, we battle back and have a chance to uh, win it, win the game down the stretch. And, um, you know, obviously didn't get over the hump for, for, the, for the reasons that you saw. But to start the overtime period, um, you know, defensively, we just really, um, you know, didn't, need, didn't do what needed to be done. On the flip side of that, they have some real offensive talent now. They're not easy, but easy to guard. I mean, this guy, Honeycutt, he can play. He can play. And that guy's he's good. And you're up on him, and he's 6'9", and he's shooting the ball. He's good. And Reeves Nelson and Joshua Smith and Lazari Jones, give them a lot of credit. I mean, we could break it down from our standpoint, but that is a talented group of guys. And extending the defense kind of helps you with the team. It's what we do. We've been doing it all year, and you know, sometimes it helps us, and, and sometimes you know, we mess that up too. So I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know that it, you know, where it breaks, you know, in terms of positive or negative, but it's, you know, it's, it's something we've been, you know, doing fairly regularly throughout the season, sometimes more than others. It seems like during that stretch, Jordan really provided a spark for you guys to get back. Here. Yeah, and his teammates helped him. He had some nice pick and roll action. He got some good, good passes, and you know he got some dump downs for dunks. Ran the floor one time, got something nice in transition. Talk about uh, the sequence where Jamal fell out after you were trying to get that timeout, and then your decision making and thought process on uh, going with Jackson down the stretch. Yeah, just just to give us a you know a, a, a steadying influence. Um, you know what we really needed as much as anything is. His careful transportation and entry of the ball, and you know Marcus had given us good minutes um, previously, and then obviously we, you know, we went some different directions, flip flop in offense and defense, and depending on what you know time and score dictated. But at that moment, time and score, and just kind of having a feel for our team, um, thought that we just needed, you know, very, very careful transportation of the ball. 
But one of the most impressive statistics for our team is we played with only nine turnovers in a 45-minute game. Um, so that, that's a step in a positive direction. We've had a number of games recently where we've had relatively low, even single-digit turnovers. In the first half's abysmal offense notwithstanding, we've also played a number of halves where we've shot over 50% from the half, which is, I think, a, a real positive for the team. I think you're almost due one of these, one of these games. Well, they say, they say these kind of games break even over time, but ultimately you have to make the plays to win the game on both ends of the floor. And, uh, you know, we made some really good plays. We just didn't make enough of them to win them.